Well, thank you all for being here, and, and um, I want to, first of all, um, this is very humbling to be here. I started my political career here. Uh, I see a lot of friends who have been with me. I look around the room and, and have ridden up and down literally thousands of miles of road, and you, you don't get where you are without a lot of help from a lot of people. It's not about you, I can tell you that. <laughs> it, it, it cannot be about you. And when, when uh, I started this journey, um, I remember asking myself uh, a number of years ago, uh, I didn't like the direction that the country was headed in. And I saw a survey of, um, uh, uh, that was done two years ago in the first congressional district that 10% of the people in this district thought we were headed in the right direction, that the country was headed in the right direction. I saw a survey done a week ago that thought now 54% of the people in this district thought we were headed in the right direction. So some things are changing, at least in the opinion of the people who live in the first congressional district, that we are going in a better direction. Uh, I could not be in that direction. Many of you know this, that, um, that a number of years ago I lost my spouse. And without uh, Clarinda, uh, I had lost her spouse of uh, many years. And we were fortunate enough to, to meet and to get to know each other. And um, she was uh, kind enough, or at least, um, as I, as I jokingly say, went off her medicine to say yes when I asked her to marry me, and we've been married a year now, and so God has blessed me royally, and I want to thank my family for being here. The newest grandbaby is here, and she's waving right now at me, which is always good, and she's going to come to D.C. and visit us. <laughs> and uh, anyway, I don't need to even, let me sit down. Now, that's all you need to do. Uh, I, was, I, was, uh, I got up this morning thinking I would give a uh, you know, I have a stump speech I could give. I'm not going to do that. I think the question you should ask yourself when you're electing somebody to Congress is this. I think, why do you want to get elected? And number two, if you do get elected, what have you done when you got elected? Well, I was elected. I, I knew that health care was a tremendous issue in this country. I'd worked with it my entire career. It's what I am. Um, I agree that we should have decreased uh, cost and increased access, and I wish the ACA had done that. It just did not. And in this district where I live and represent, half of the people in this district, almost half as many people pay a penalty, in other words, a fine or a tax when they can't afford insurance, as get a subsidy. We've got to make it where it's less expensive for everybody. So I want to continue to work on that issue. As was mentioned, and thank you for that great introduction, um, I asked myself, what little things have you done to make a difference in people's lives? And I'll share one of them with you. Um, the, uh, the minority leader, the number two guy on the Democratic side of the Congress, uh, and I worked together. The best lobbyist I've had come in my office was Trace Atkins, 12-year-old daughter. And she came up, she had a food allergy. And she needed, she showed me how to use an EpiPen. That was the sweetest thing I've ever seen. And we started talking about food allergies. Steny Hoyer and myself worked on a bill that got passed and President Obama signed into law where EpiPens can now be in schools. And a young student in Kingsport the other day, his life was saved because of that piece of legislation. And that made a difference. The Independent Payment Advisory Board, some people call it a death panel, I call it a rationing board, to have one in England, was the worst part of the ACA. And over eight, almost 800 organizations came to us and said, please repeal this. Let me tell you how hard and long I worked on that. And this was a bipartisan bill. My bipartisan co-sponsor is Dr. Ruiz, a Democratic physician from California. Seven years and 11 months, I never quit because I thought it was a bad idea. Every Congress I had to go through it again and again and again. We got that passed and repealed into the dustbin of bad ideas. It's gone. It will not affect Medicare. And this was with a ration care for our Medicare seniors. I looked at the, uh, when I got there, I met with our teachers, as was mentioned. I meet with them all the time. And they told me this no child left behind is, is not right. It's not working. And I understood why they did it. So what did I do? I, I worked hard for six years. I was part of the conference report that got no child left behind repealed. And that now, those, those decisions are made at the state and local level, exactly where they should be made. We should let our classroom, and that's why I meet with classroom teachers, what is on your mind? What can I do to make your job easier for you to teach our children? And I am a, I am a, I never didn't go to kindergarten, I didn't have a kindergarten when I was in school, but I went to school in the public school system my entire life. That's elementary school, high school, 
college and medical school. And I'm forever grateful for the great system we have. And by the way, in the state of Tennessee, we have the fastest improving schools in the nation. We have the only state in the union that allows free community college and technical school. We are getting ready for the 21st century jobs that are out there. I, I have a passion for veterans. And when I got to Congress, there were 29 people on the Veterans Affairs Committee. I was number 29, the, the last guy on there. I've now chaired that committee after last term, after four terms, and the, and the president said he wanted to improve the care we get for our veterans, our nation's veterans. So what did I do? I sat down with every Republican on the committee and every Democrat on the committee, and I said, I want this to be our legislation and bill because it is about veterans. It's not about politicians. This is about how do we take care of our nation's heroes. And we worked through that, and that bill, is, as was mentioned, is called the VA Mission Act. I didn't name it after myself. I named it after three people in this country who served this nation. I named it after Senator Akaka, a Democratic senator from Hawaii who won the Congressional Medal of Honor, World War II. I named it after Hank Johnson, a Republican who is the longest serving prisoner of war in American history. I served with him in the U.S. Congress. Google him up tonight when you go home and read about the hero, Hank Johnson. And I named it after Senator John McCain, as you know, who is, who is terminally ill. Um, that bill will change forever about how the VA will be transformed, how the VA provides care for our nation's heroes. Or, or it will just be another piece of paper that we've written on in Washington, D.C. if it's not implemented properly. And it's one of the reasons I want to go back. Second part of that bill, it's a, it's a massive bill, the second part of that bill for catastrophically injured Injured veterans, if, you're, if you've lost a leg or an arm or had a head injury, a terrible traumatic brain injury, uh, right now, post 9-11, we provide, if your spouse stays home with you, we give them a stipend, we pay them to stay there because it's better for the veteran and better for the taxpayer, quite frankly, and we provide health insurance for them, but not for pre-9-11, not for people my age who served in Vietnam, who served in Korea, who served in World War II. Next two years, we're going to transform that. Elizabeth Dole came to me and said, we need to do this, the Dole Foundation. We put that as part of the bill, and now our World War II veterans are going to get the same treatment as their post-9-11. Number three, health care is changing dramatically, and the footprint of it is very different than it was when I started practice. So we're going to look at the VA and get the VA right size for today's health care needs. We also passed a bill, which I'm very proud of, the accountability and whistleblower protection. You can now terminate a poor performing employee. You couldn't do that before. Number two, we have thousands of veterans, who's, actually hundreds of thousands of veterans, whose claims, have their disability claims, have taken years to adjudicate. Four, five, six, seven, eight years. One of the best friends I will ever have in my life, Phil Street, died waiting on his claim to get adjudicated from Agent Orange. It took two years to get his claim done after he passed. Well, let me tell you, this bill we've got is currently being ramped up. It will shorten that for all veterans around the country. Number three, and I am very proud of this bill because I used this bill. When I got back from Korea in 1975, uh, I was able to use the GI Bill. That My country gave me $300 a month for two years. To this day, I'm grateful for that, that I got that money. It helped me. I had a young family, and it helped me get my education. The post-9-11 GI Bill is a great bill, but it terminates at the end of 15 years. Mine, I could only use for 10 years, and it was gone. That bill now is forever, and it's paid for. You can use that if you lose your job when you're 50. You can use the GI Bill. Secondly, in that bill, and I was absolutely passionate about this, was if you shed blood for this country, you want a Purple Heart, you get the GI Bill. Many people didn't serve long enough to get it, to qualify for it. Today you get that GI Bill the rest of your life if you shed blood for America. And number three, I didn't serve with any reservists or guardsmen. We had a drafted army when I was in. But the guardsmen and reservists now serve right alongside the active duty people. And many of them didn't get the same education benefit because they didn't serve long enough. We've upgraded their benefit also. So I think we've been transformed. And lastly, I want to say one other thing that I said, I'm going to get this done before I leave the U.S. Congress, and that's the Blue Water Navy. There's a presumption if you serve in Vietnam that Agent Orange, there are certain diseases that you get benefits for, but if you served in the Navy on a surface ship, 
you didn't get that benefit. Paid for, we're going to vote on it not this week, but the next week, and we're going to get those benefits for our Blue Water Navy folks. 523 of us Vietnam Year veterans are dying every day. And I said, I'm not going to sit around and wait till all 90,000 of these brave men and women die before we get the benefit. So that's the passion I have for this, and I will, I will say that I've mentioned education. Um, I think right now, is, and, and uh, from a standpoint of the economy, I don't know about you, but I don't know a better time in America to go get a job. There are now more job openings in America than there are people to fill the jobs. That's never happened in my lifetime. The unemployment rate in our state is 3.4%, and in the country, 3.8%. It's unheard of. And for young people out there who are looking, I, I look at young college graduates now, I say I, the opportunity for you has never been greater. I look back at my generation where we're facing the Vietnam War, the economy was not that good. Now we have a chance to do that. Uh, one of the things that I want to give um, President Trump uh, a lot of credit for is, is what's going on on the world scene on Korea. Mm. Folks, I have served 11 miles south of that demilitarized zone. It was a very dangerous place then. A war there is unthinkable. I can tell you a conventional war is catastrophic, not only for that, that area of the world, and I'll tell you why it's so important. When I was there 40 years ago, that country was digging out of a terrible war that flattened it. I mean, literally flattened it. Those folks used freedom, education, and hard work. Let me tell you where they are today. When I was there in 1973, they had a military dictator. Today, because of what America did, they have 50 million free people. They have 11, the 11th largest economy in the world is South Korea, and one of our best allies. We cannot allow that to happen. So I applaud the, the president for trying to bring peace and stability to that area of the world. And I know Mike Pompeo well. I served with him in the Congress, who's the Secretary of State. Mike will do a great job. And I hope that they do bring stability and peace there because the entire world will benefit from that. I want to um, talk uh, just a couple more minutes and then uh, and I'll let you all get out of here. And I want to thank you um, uh, for the support you've given me during this last year. I've had, as you know, some uh, health issues and head surgery and I'm doing great. My tests are fine. Uh, but I appreciate your prayers. Uh, I can't tell you how much uh, people today, I was in Elizabeth and early this morning and someone said, we've been praying for you. And I said, I know that and I appreciate that because it's made me, I know, uh, help me and my family uh, tremendously. Uh, to represent you all, the people in this district, will be one of the greatest privileges and honors of my life. And I think that, that really brought it into focus. Clorinda and I went to Europe about five weeks ago and it was, we were there to see NATO, to meet the NATO people and to go through some security issues that were going on in NATO, but also we were going to the battlefield. I didn't realize when I got this job as a VA uh, chairman that all the battlefield monuments in the world come under my committee, all the cemeteries in the United States and in the world. I had a chance to visit those cemeteries at Flanders Field, at Normandy, at uh, Abello Woods and to see the sacrifice that these men and women have done for this country. I'm telling you, when you see rows and rows, thousands of those, those Italian marble gravestones, and to this day, we are, America, if we find any remains, or we, we intern those remains, if we think we can identify the unknown, we bring them back to this country, and if they're identified, they can be buried here or they can be buried right back where they were. And so I, it made it so easy for me. As a matter of fact, when I was on that trip, even though there was a six hour time difference, I was working on a VA mission bill on the phone because I became more passionate about it when I saw our heroes and what they had done for this country. I, I'm asking for your prayers, your votes. I appreciate your support and the privilege of representing, I think, the best congressional district in America which is the first congressional district. God bless you all and thank you very much.